Salutations, everyone! Welcome back to Victoria 3. I'm Lord Formand, and today we have a guide on technology. So, in this case, we're going to be using one of my sample games from China, where I have researched all the technology here. So, it shouldn't affect anything. So, how tech works in Victoria 3, and this might be a refresher for some of you, but we'll cover a variety of topics that should all be chaptered below, so you can skip to what you want. So let's get right into it. How does the technology system work from at the bare basics? Well, the first basics is you generate what the game calls innovation, and it is spent on a technology. And it explains all of this stuff. You also have what is called technologically spread, which is countries that have acquired a tech, it will slowly spread to you, one in each category. So technically you can get three spread at once. The earlier techs are more likely to get, and it spreads based off your country's literacy as well as your technology spread. And that's pretty much the basics of tech here. You pick a category, you click on it, you start researching it, and it fills up the cost bar and it buys the technology for you. At the same time, the innovation will pick randomized techs and it will slowly gain those as well. So the really reality is you're picking one tech to research and you're getting three techs randomly given to you over time. Now at the beginning, picking a tech yourself is more efficient than letting it spread to you on average. And there are ways to change that and we'll talk about that later. But what this means is you don't necessarily have to have the world's greatest technological power um, tons of universities, tons of innovation and research in order to get tech. You will get it slowly, even as nations that don't have any technological capacity, like natives in Africa, for example. But it still means that the great powers who can afford to build universities and everything and generate more innovation will have a higher tech level, etc., etc. Higher tech level is almost always better. Um, it will allow more production methods to be unlocked in your buildings, which is a whole separate videos type stuff. But suffice to say, if you go to a tech and you can change which level you're using a production method on, you will gain a variety of bonuses. Higher ones are usually better. There are exceptions. I'm not going to explain that here. Okay, so I've explained the technology, how it spreads. So let's talk about how you generate it. So, first off, your weekly innovation is 50, just base. Every country in the world gets 50. Then every university you build here gets you more innovation. And it does have bonuses one way or the other. So if we go here to this university here, it's got a throughput bonus. It gains tons of qualifications, gives a lot of innovation as well as urbanization, but it costs a massive amount of money and paper as well to manage, as well as infrastructure. Universities are your way of gaining tech. You're going to want to build a lot of them. You're going to want to centralize them. Um, you're going to get want to gain as much as you can get. By and large, universities are pretty simple to operate in the sense that they usually, they just require paper. So if you're going to go for tech, you're going to need a lot of paper mills. In this case, my paper cost is massively high. And you're going to have to pay their wages as well as be aware that you're going to use a lot of infrastructure. Now, as much as I talked about centralization, I will point out the fact that it is probably worth going to and throwing down at least one university, or in this case, I did 35, uh, one university in almost every single one of your states, especially if you're planning on building industries in that state, which you should. Each state should have one, maybe two industries in it. Um, the reason you want a university is to get the, increase the qualifications so people can work in the higher um, level industries and be educated for that. Now, that's something for late game, so don't worry about it early game. Early game, just even getting four or five universities can give you a nice tech boost as well as support your industry. It's not to be said that population cannot become qualified without universities, but it speeds it up enough that building a building, they get qualified really fast. 
Now, the other and slightly more complex way of getting technology through technolo technology spread is slightly more complex. So first off, you have a base spread value of 25. Then whatever the literacy of your population is, in this case, mine technically is 49, but they only give me, um, oh, come on, game. This is frustrating. <laughs> well, we'll just go over there. They're only giving me 37. Now, here's where the key part comes in. Your weekly innovation is capped. It is capped, as you can see at the bottom of this long one. A maximum of 124.93 innovation can be invested into active research each week. Some from your base value and 74 from your literacy. So literacy applies in your base value as well as your technology spread. Now, that cap on weekly innovation is not as limiting as people would think because, obviously, we've exceeded that massively at this point. The remainder, a good portion of it, goes into technology spread and is used as technology as well, unspent innovation. In this case, we're getting 2,000 research from it. So, as you can see, our weekly innovation, we were researching texts a lot faster through spread than researching them ourselves. So if you're a non-major nation at the beginning of the game with, that starts with a ton of research, also known as Great Britain or France or Prussia, those tend to be the early game tech leaders just because of their setup, you're going to get more technology late game potentially through technology spread than building innovation yourself. And because you'll be so far behind, it's almost impossible to catch up through pure research alone. You need the spread. So obviously you end up in this very hilariously ridiculous situation where I'm getting, what, almost 20 times more <laughs> research from spreading than researching myself. But it is a very viable strategy. Um, I was getting technologies, late game technologies in like six months, whereas if I researched on my own, it'd be like six years. Uh, it was very powerful. Now, the other thing to note is technology spread is affected by your censorship type laws. So if we go over here and we look at free speech, if you outlaw dissent, you lose technology spread, right of assembly, there's none, and perfected, protected speech, more technology spread. So if you want to get your technology by doing techno technology spread, not necessarily educating and researching it yourself, Free speech is pretty good. There are other laws that have various effects on it as well, as well as the institutions. So the major institution you care about is under the education one. So every level of education tends to get more educational access as well as another effect based off your system. At the start, most countries, not the major ones, have no schools, therefore you do not have the education institution. The first one many people unlock is religious schools, which will also convert your populace and will strengthen your religious group, but it will provide the education access, which is quite important because it gives a bonus or penalty to all your pops. Private schools have a bit more. Now, the note here is that the education access is based off wealth level, so the more wealthy your population is, the more spread they get as well as boosting your intelligentsia. But in the end, usually the best one to head to is public schools, if you can. It assimilates people to your culture faster, as well as provides equal education access to the religious schools. If you're a super wealthy nation, technically private schools could be better. And then, of course, every level of the institution that you can afford gives you more and more. Obviously, there are limits on how far you can improve based off um, your bureaucracy. So large nations like here's the Chinese, I just cannot afford the bureaucracy costs to get all the way to max. Obviously I didn't need to, but if you can, education, law and institution early on can give you a very nice boost. Even a level one is a very nice boost to your education. Over time, your literacy rate will go up and it will get you more technology spread as well. And you can see like that, how that works. So to summarize, the cost of education is really simple. First off, paper 
is a big one for your universities and money as well to buy, the, well, obviously buy the paper with money, but you need a supply of paper. By and large, you should build it domestically rather than buying it from abroad. It'll save you costs in the long run. And obviously money for your wages. This varies off your, um, your education mandates in your building. Sometimes this will be religious people. Other times it will be academics. Honestly, I found the academics tend to be slightly better there, um, but that's my own opinion. They cost money as well. And then there's the infrastructure. That is just for the universities. Now, if you're going to use the institution, that requires, first off, changing a law and paying a bureaucracy cost. So you're looking at really four potential costs for your education. Paper, wages, bureaucracy, and if you're centralizing, infrastructure capacity. Uh, now, it's not to say that going over infrastructure capacity is the end of the world, um, especially once you get to later techs, you tend to end up with a massive excess of infrastructure, specifically once you hit electric chains. But in the short run, it can cause a lot of havoc. It might not be the best idea to place your major university in one of your major manufacturing hubs. Just put like one, maybe two universities there. Think of universities as almost a separate industry. Same thing with government administration. They're about equivalent to an industry building, but they cost you money. Okay, the last part of this should be the technologies themselves what are important technologies why would you want to get them and in what order do you want to get them and this is partially through my own research as well as looking at what other people have said about it so first off let's note that some technologies have access to different um, some civilizations have access to different technology in this case since we're china we have access to sericulture which is basically silkworm manufacturing. Now, there's not too many of those in the game right now. Expect to see more of them as the game expands and the DLCs continue. Tech is obviously divided into three categories. Honestly, the weakest category to focus on is military. It's probably the one you need to focus on the least, so long as you don't fall too far behind and you're not trying to conquer the world. Society is mainly improvements to your country and production is mainly how is basically industrializing your nation to make you more money to be able to spend on more things making it probably the most important tree to focus on now we're going to get into something slightly controversial here some people say that the best thing to do for most nations at the start is to beeline for railways now that is a strategy and it's not a bad one however and this is something most people are unaware of because of the game's ui is pretty bad your technology costs increase each tier, and if you haven't finished all of the tier before, they're more expensive. So ideally, if you wanted to spend the least amount of um, innovation on research, you should research everything from each level in order and then move down the tree that way. Now, obviously, that's not always needed because there are some technologies that are relatively useless in the game. I'm looking at organized sports in particular, um, then you could probably skip it, wait for the technology spread to get it. But if you're going to start as a early nation that in the case of China, you might not even have cotton gin or lathe and you're gonna beeline railroads, you're going to sacrifice a lot of other technologies in the meantime and spend more innovation getting there. Whereas if you spent some other time researching the lower level techs. Once you get to railways, it'll be quicker to get all the techs put together, as well as you might be able to afford more universities. So it's your choice. You can beeline for certain techs, or you can save points and research levels at a time. So let's start now going over the particularly powerful technologies. So we're going to assume that you're starting as a nation with basically no technologies. Obviously, some nations, Great Britain, France, Prussia, etc., start with advanced technologies. Some of them are already down here at like nitroglycerin and stuff at the beginning of the game. We're going to assume that isn't the case. So obviously, some of this initial stuff will be relatively useless for people who are paying civilized and advanced nations. So to start, 
the probably most important early game stuff to consider is urbanization and rationalism. The big use of rationalism here is it starts to unlock more tech options as well as giving you access to an institution, but you can't build universities until you get academia. Getting both of these two is a great start. The reason you want to get this is the infrastructure as well as the construction sector max level. Otherwise, your construction level is pathetically low. Further on in the society one, bureaucracy is quite important because it unlocks your government admin building. Without it, it's hard to increase your bureaucracy to afford institutions um, as well as increases your taxation capacity, which is very important, especially for smaller nations. Again, urban planning is another nice, easy tech to snag as well. And democracy, if you're wanting to shift away from being ruled by a monarchy, you're going to need to get landed voting and all the other voting laws, making this extraordinarily important as well. So in my opinion, the first most important six techs are probably the six on society. These two over, these three over here are slightly less important. Urban planning might be the weakest of them, but bonuses to infrastructure and construction, it's going to be quite a while before you get any passive ones. You're going to have to build stuff like railroads, making it very useful early on as well. Further on, if you're able to afford it, hi cap. Um, Getting empiricism is very useful as well for getting access to public schools if you can switch to it. Medical degrees is important as well if you want to get to an improved healthcare system. And romanticism here gets you access to agrarianism, which for most people switching away from traditional economic systems will probably be one of the, your first categories you get. Moving on from there, while the military is extraordinarily important in the sense that if you're still using irregulars, you're going to get crushed by anybody with any troops, the first major improvement you want to try and get to is line infantry. Obviously, if you were starting from the beginning, it's a long way away. If you're at a one of these starting tier two techs, we'll call them, getting line infantry is pretty quickly. Uh, uh, sorry, will happen pretty quickly and is worth doing. The next one that makes a world of difference here is obviously artillery for your cannons, followed up by general staff, which gives you skirmish. Once you hit skirmish, that's going to be the dominant military force for ages. While I would say get the basic society techs as soon as you can, if you're under any threat at all, getting line infantry is extraordinarily important. It will start allowing um, minor nations or technologically backwards ones actually to have a hope of competing against the Europeans. Obviously, some nations like Prussia, Great Britain, and France get to skirmish infantry super early and are really, really hard to stop. Now, the naval tree here, honestly, just ignore it. It's not worth putting any effort into it at all, especially early game. Now, getting to production. Obviously, some have unique techs, Research them when you get the chance. The next one here, enclosure, you're going to start with most nations. It's useful. It allows for you to build basically your agricultural buildings. And I don't think many nations start without all of these base couple two or three research. So let's move on from there. Shaft mining, if you don't have it, gets you your mining. Obviously super important if you want to ever use iron tools or anything. You're going to need that as well as improved construction. Many nations do not have access to cotton gin at the beginning of the game. It's a pretty quick tech to snag. You also get it very swiftly through technology spread. It's useful to get if you have cotton plantations. Otherwise, it's one of those techs you could skip and wait for technology spread to give it to you later. Lathe here is really good because it starts improving your furniture, textiles, and your glassworks, which are uh, industries most nations can afford to build early on. Be aware that this is starting to expand what resources you need to put into the buildings. Uh, for leaded glass here in particular, you start to need lead, which if you don't have a lead mine can cause a bottleneck. Steelworking, if you're ever hoping to get steel stuff, is important, as well as prospecting. 
Out of these ones, if you have gold mines, you should almost beeline to prospecting because it generates a stupid amount of wealth in the long run. Um, I'm getting 1.5k um, from minting, and out of that, a lot is um, 16k is from gold mines, and I had that for most of the game. But let's get into the line that most people will start with. So out of this line of text here under production, and I'm assuming you've already snagged at least this part of society, at which point, unless you're um, really suffering for bureaucracy or you need to get more money from gold or loans, you're going to pretty much leave the society and military text behind. Make sure you have line infantry first, at least. Production is going to be your main focus for quite a while. The rest you'll get through technology spread, especially if you build plenty of universities. So out of this line of tech, and this is my particular path I like to take. Other people have different paths. I like to hit intensive agriculture. Most nations have a strong industrial base at the start of the game, or your industry is going to be largely agriculture based for some time nations like India and um, China to some degree, uh, this can be very powerful. This improves your farms as well as gets you access to fertilizer through your livestock ranches, which of course you will be using fertilizer in your farms. It's just pretty much a flat increase to your industry, assuming you've got any livestock ranches at all and farms. Obviously you're going to have farms. This is a, a flat improvement. It will increase your money. It the lack of fertilizer is not the world's biggest issue because you can always build a chemical plant or you just build plenty of livestock ranches and forget about chemical plant until you need uh, explosives. Outside of that, the next one that's probably the most key here is the atmospheric engine. This starts your use of um, coal. Um, as you'll see here, you need coal to start mining these. It's a really great improvement to your mines be aware though if you do not have coal mines already in place when you swap the production method which you should swap pretty quickly after you get this tech because it's just a huge economic boost it's like a 30 percent efficiency boost it's pretty crazy um you will run into a bottleneck of where you will not have coal so you will not be mining iron so that you will not be able to produce tools therefore you can't mine coal or get iron there can be a very vicious cycle downwards if you're not prepared for this thankfully coal mines themselves the improvement for coal mines does not use coal in fact in their mining that would have been weird um meaning so long as you can ensure at least one line of production of something so like you buy iron from abroad, let's say, then you can make the tools, then you can mine the iron, and then you can build up. It's something if you get in the spiral, buy from abroad if you can. Otherwise, go back and wait on this. But anyway, this is a huge improvement for your mines. It will make you lots of money and will actually make your mines uh, profitable. The next one here, mechanical tools, is very important. The big use is the big one here is the sulfur pulping. To increase your paper production so if you're trying to build tons of government buildings and universities both which require tons of paper it is very useful as well as well as a nice little improvement here for your livestock ranches to get you more meat meat is very valuable um, it's a definitely improvement over grains as well as getting both atmospheric engines and mechanical tools will get you access to railways if you're beelining for railways, some people's strategy calls for that. This can be very useful as well. This is where you start improving your um, infrastructure and your transportation. The big benefit here, the infrastructure will solve any infrastructure shortages you might have. However, it does cost steel engines, or in this case, it requires... Um, I've already done the improvement, so it's requiring electricity. But previously, it's uh, coal and engines. I think I could be wrong. could be steel as well. Either way, it's a big technological leap from atmospheric engines and mechanical tools to railway. My advice is once you want to go for railways, you have to start setting up your economy early on to be able to afford the increased um, technological demand railways take. Honestly, I've tried beelining railways. 
and I have not found it that beneficial to myself. So I have del I will get the tech and I just won't build railways for a while. Uh, maybe I'll build one or two just to start them, but otherwise I ignore it. The next one on here, if you're going for weapons in conquest, getting the Bessemer process here to improve your steel mills uh, it can be very useful, especially when it comes to producing higher level guns and cannons. The next one over here, and these, are, these next ones aren't overwhelmingly important. Probably the big one here is the crystal glass. Um, increases more glass, which you're going to need glass later on, so getting a nice start on it is useful, but otherwise not immensely useful. It does increase your lead use, which is kind of nice if you want to boost your lead mining. Canneries here. It's okay. It's not the world's greatest ones. You use more iron and fish, but less grain to produce more groceries. If you've invested in a food industry, great one. Otherwise, not so much. Fractional distillation improves your liquor production at the cost of groceries. It uses more glass and sugar. It's probably a pretty unbeneficial technology unless liquor is like your whole economy. Baking powder here is one of the first technologies I pretty much just ignore if I can. I get it through technology spread. It's not game changing, mainly because the increase in grain and sugar is huge. And at this point, your grocery production is probably not huge. As a rule of thumb, moving through the tech trees, any single technology that's off on its own with nothing above or below it is probably not a great tech. Uh, it just seems to be the game designers did it, so baking powder is one here. Um, on the next row here, I've already talked about how bad baking powder is in my opinion. Railways are great. Honestly, if you don't have the industry, I'd skip railways and take it second. Probably after you get nitroglycerin, this is a huge increase to your um, production of your resources at the cost of killing off a decent amount of your population because the nitroglycerin is very unstable, but it's a nice boost to your economy. It also gives you a reason to build some chemical plants if you haven't already done so for a shortage of fertilizer. Once you do, you will get the production needed to be able to afford the railways much easier. Otherwise, you have to build multiple, multiple coal and iron mines to support it all. Water tube boiler is really good if you can afford the increased coal and tool cost. And it is surprisingly large, this increase of coal and tools. Yes, the benefit here is insane for your mining. And since iron and coal are two of the major engines of, that drive your economy and construction, getting any tech that improves production of those is usually a good tech. It's a nice one, but it can be expensive to implement all at once. It's definitely one of the techs you want to implement over time. Further on, mechanized workshops. This is probably one of the most important techs of the game. The only reason I'm not putting it first of this tier of production is because most players will not be hitting their um, economy of scale cap unless you're really centralizing, which is not a bad strategy. If you do, this improves your economy of scale. It basically will give you a 10% throughput bonus, extending it from 20 to 30. Um, it's a really good bonus. There's only a couple of these in the entire game, so it's worth snagging. Further on, chemical bleaching is okay if you're using glassworks it will give you access to porcelain which is a valuable trade good most nations don't seem to produce a good good amount of it so selling this could be a good luxury resource paper bleaching is great assuming you have sulfur mines and dye plantations otherwise don't switch to this stay on the earlier tech um it's it's much easier <laughs> to deal with um rather than having to worry about uh, bleaching as well. Although the paper increase is nice, the sulfur and dye can be crippling, especially if you don't have dye plantations. It's, it's absolutely devastating not having a dye plantation. Uh, it might be one of the most important plantations. So out of grabbing all of these texts here, this is when you might want to wander over to military and society and grab more. Um, I'm going to continue down the production tree now. 
and we'll cover what's the most important stuff, and then I'll try and hit military and society as well, if that makes sense. So at the next level here, you've got a lot of stuff. This is probably one of the largest tech levels in the game. You can do a lot of stuff with this. Some are more important than others. Some you should research last. So I want to point out right here, these are probably the ones you want to research last. Electrical generation and steel railway cars. The reasoning being, these are more needed at higher levels of tech. And early on, they will not make you money and they will cost you resources and time. The benefits of electrical generation itself are not huge other than building power plants. Yes, you get more wood from sawmills, but otherwise it's not worth prioritizing. Steel railway cars, honestly, I just don't consider this to be a good tech. It hurts your infrastructure. It, yes, it gives you transportation. But at this point, the odds of you having an excess of infrastructure are low. If you do, get this. Otherwise, wait on it towards the end. Rubber mastication. Unless you have rubber, meaning you've gone into Africa or other area that allows for rubber, is entirely useless technology for most people. If you do have it, it's still relatively useless because you will not be using rubber at really this point of technology. Now, vacuum canning here. This is a, honestly, it's a bit out of place because it requires oil. Um, you're not going to really want to go into that at the moment because you probably won't have oil mines, or sorry, not mines, oil derricks at this point. Some nations have oil, most nations don't, making it. These four texts here are probably the least important on this level of production. If you're wanting to increase your construction, reinforced concrete might be the best on this level. Um, in terms of a single tech, getting more throughput on your construction sector is amazing. So I'd probably take it first on this level. Um, the only exception might be taking dynamite. And the reason I might take dynamite over the others is it gives you a big increase to your chemical plants explosive output, which can help both with your military and mining costs, as well as unlocks dynamite, which yes, include costs more explosives, but it gets rid of the rather painful, if you've got low population, mortality issue of killing off your engineers, laborers, and machinists, as well as a nice little um, boost to your production level of resources. The next one here, if you can do it, improved fertilizers is amazing for your agriculture industry. Nations that focus on it, like the British East India Company, this can be a huge boost to your economy, increases your production to the point that you'll probably start being able to export um, agricultural stuff as well, as well as giving you access to improved fertilizers. Steam Donkey is a really good one as well. Again, more, more production of your um, resources at the cost of engines. But the big benefit here is even though it doesn't show a huge increase in your production, what it does is it lowers the amount of laborers, decreasing your labor cost, making though, even though you might be producing less goods, you'll be producing less goods at a much cheaper cost if that makes sense. So you might have to build another mine or two to uh, balance out the loss in production, but you will be saving um, a thousand laborers per level, which is quite useful. Those wages can get excessive in the late game. Rotary valve engines is great. The only reason I wouldn't put this higher is it doesn't require a large increase of tool, tools and coal, which you should probably be using on other stuff, which is more important at that point. Out of these four, electrical generations, the priority here, um, you're going to need power plants later on, and it also gives you access to shift work. So if we look at the next level here, the single most important one here is shift work. Shift work increases your economy of scale by 20 compared to mechanized workshops, which was 10. This is 20. This will now get you to a bonus of 50. It, it's, it's a huge increase to your economy if you're centralizing. It's worth doing centralization, and this makes it totally worthwhile. Next to that, electrical capacitors. This just gives you some more bonuses to your textile mills. If at this point you're finding your textile mills aren't making you money, 
this will help because now you'll use electricity and it is a very large output increase here of clothes you see up above. It also employs more people, which is kind of nice. And your chemical plants, you can make more efficient at generating explosives. Note that this does decrease your fertilizer amount, meaning as you progress through chemical mills, you'll be using, you're producing less fertilizer, more explosives. Really, the only way to make that up is either build more chemical plants or build more pastures. The next one over here, pump jacks, I would say is more important than um, the other techs, probably um, right next to shift work. I could honestly go for this one first. Depends on if I've centralized or a lot. This is a large increase to your production. Again, if you're in agricultural industry, this is huge. The downside is it is a large increase in your use of engines, meaning you pretty much need a domestic motor industry to be able to afford this tech. But it is a very huge bonus to employment and production. It's just great. And most importantly, it gives you access to oil rigs. Now, the odd thing here is vacuum canning uses oil, but you don't unlock oil to the tier after. It's a bit out of order, I think. Expect to see a reorder at some point. Threshing machines. Honestly, I am not sold on these. Yes, it does decrease the labor cost, but it is an increase to tools and coal that... I have not seen it really make the world's greatest difference. If you can afford it, great. Otherwise, I would I I just let this get through technology spread at some point. Now, over here we have synthetic plants. Uh, plants. If you have no dye plantations, this is the point at which you can overcome that problem at the cost of fertilizer and sulfur. It's quite nice. Um, you're going to need it for obviously your textiles and stuff. It's worth getting if you don't have dye plantations. Otherwise, it's less of a priority. And then vulcanization. This is where you can actually start using the rubber you've unlocked before. You can build elastics in your textile mills, which is a huge increase to your luxury clothes. It will make you a lot of money, assuming you have access to rubber. It also get you bicycle messengers for your military, which increases your province captured. Doesn't fully outweigh the loss of um, trench infantry's lack of capturing, but it helps considerably. And so that's that tier. The next tier is larger than the one before, but has less important changes here. These two techs, art silk and automatic bottle blowers, are pretty well useless for most um countries this one here the only benefit is it gets you access to silk this one here i have honestly never used it and i probably won't because it uses oil and most nations have a large shortage of oil with how the way the ai plays the game unless you own tons of oil producing lands it's not worth increasing your oil costs in fact most nations aren't even going to really build cars for the same reason because they require um, or automobiles because they require oil. So in this next level, what is the most important stuff here? I would probably say it's electric railway, railways, hands down. The reason being electrical um, railways, oh, come on, electric trains here is a massive increase to both your infrastructure and your transportation. Previously, if you went with the steel railway cars, you were decreasing infrastructure. Once you get electric railways, your infrastructure capacity, assuming you've been keeping up with it all along, just explodes. It's quite ridiculous. I think I got like two, 3,000 extra in Beijing because of it. Um, the other benefits here are some slight improvements to your production of your engines in motor industries, which is great at the cost of steel and electricity, which is honestly a um, small cost for the benefits you gain. Um, Increased transportation reduces your employment levels. It's nice. Plus, you've just gained a huge uh, improvement down here to your transportation. So you should be rolling in it. This is the point where if you want to hit a boom tech to get to billions of population, um, you can see where that spike was in my GDP graph. That was when I hit electric railways, basically. Um, well, actually, it was a little bit before that, but pretty close. Out of the next ones here, there are some, again, more important than others. Plastics, relatively useless unless you have access to a large amount of oil. 
because look at that cost. It does help with glass though. The other one over here, pasteurization, honestly is not that great. Decreases your labor amount, great. The odds are you probably have too much population unemployed if you keep making all these reduced employment production methods. Telephone is okay in the sense that it unlocks your in electrics industries, but the reality is you're not really using it immensely at this point, but it will help with your government um, bureaucracy issues later on, as well as getting you access to radios, um, which is an important military tech. Over here, nitrogen fixation. It's a nice bonus to your production of agriculture. If you're an agriculture nation, you can literally make as much money as most industrialized nations just through agriculture, so long as you can sell it abroad. The next one here, mechanized farming unlocks tractors. The only issue I potentially see here is that you're going to be using engines for a lot of stuff at this point, so you might not be able to afford this transition, making it slightly less useful. Electric arc welding, honestly, as great as this is, this is a massive increase in iron, coal, and electricity usage. You might not be able to afford it at this point. Depends on how well you've built up your industry, but this right here almost killed my economy when I researched it. Oh, and I did all the transitions early on in this particular game. Pneumatic tools is another great tech. I would probably put it right behind electric railways to prioritize here. Depends on if you're an agriculture nation or not, otherwise nitrogen fixation. Construction sector throughput, as well as research discovery chance. If you've got rubber or oil in your lands, this will increase the odds of you finding it, which is nice, or even gold sometimes. Combustion engine, honestly, I don't like it. Unless you've got access to a good amount of oil, you're not going to be able to afford this. Obviously, nations like the US, um, uh, some of the Middle East that have oil can do this, but the others, you're never, you're not going to be able to use this tech. As China here, I'm producing, I think I'm number one in the world in oil production, and I still have oil shortages. It's just, there's no oil production in the world for me to buy. Hopefully that changes as the AI gets better, but right now it's, unfortunately a relatively useless tech the big benefit here is the combustion engine derricks which gets you more oil if you have oil if you do it helps a little bit but that oil increase is still not enough to overcome the additional oil cost that everything else is going to be demanding okay the next level radios the big use of here is it increases your production of radios, which if you're fighting wars and you need it for your military, it, this is quite useful. Otherwise, telephones will probably be enough. And the final level, what's great here? Well, it's kind of tricky to say. It depends on if you've got the oil to afford it. If you do, compression ignition is great, increases more engines, increases your production of all your resources and increases minting here which is great on your gold mines if you have them but if you can't afford the oil arc welding is probably going to be what you go for and unlocks arc welded construction buildings this is the highest level of construction getting it early is great because you'll speed up through the tech tree or you'll speed up your building considerably assuming i will point out that you can afford the glass, explosives, electricity, and the rather large 90 steel increase. So if you built a lot of construction sectors, this is great, but be aware you need to be able to support the resource cost. Flash freezing, less useful, but is a nice little improvement up here to your fishing and livestock ranches, decreases the employment costs at a very, honestly, minuscule cost of transportation electricity, making it quite profitable in the long run. Oil turbine is great for producing more electricity. If you can support 50 oil per level, the odds of you being able to do that right now, slim, if they improve oil production or give other ways of getting it, uh, you might get more. Where's diesel when you need it, right? Dough rollers, honestly, I don't love it. It's in a decent tech, decreases employment cost at the cost of tools. You're probably rolling in tools at this point, so this is nice. And that is the production tree.
Just remember, the single most important texts here are probably the economy of scale. If you're centralizing, then railways and electronic railways, as well as your explosives and mining techs. Okay, let's cover society and we'll leave military for last because it's probably the least important tree because this is not a war game. So we've already talked about the first initial levels here. We'll just quickly cover these. Law enforcement, this is a great tech if you don't have it because it gives you law enforcement institution, which is the way radicals and loyalists work. You're going to be struggling with radicals as the game goes on. Yeah. Getting a law enforcement institution, assuming you have the bureaucracy early, will pay dividends for the rest of the game. More importantly, it allows you to get the dedicated police force law, which is quite useful if you have local police force law and you're trying to take out your landholder's political strength, because even they improve a de uh, approve of a dedicated police force to some degree. International trade, this unlocks more trade stuff. Most nations start with these, so... Most people can ignore this one. Centralization is huge, though, because it gives you access to filing cabinets at your government admin building, which is a huge bureaucracy increase if you don't have it. A lot of nations, most of the Asian ones with mass populations, China, India region, Japan, suffer from bureaucracy issues. This is a needed tech if you don't have it, as well as it gets you road maintenance, which is probably the best decree in the game right now. International relations, if you don't have it, you can't do diplomacy, so this helps. Anyway, most nations start with at least this covered. Over here, we've already talked about this, but empiricism and medical degrees are great because they allow access to more stuff. Romanticism is surprisingly important just because it gives you another decree. The migration is great as a small nation, and getting agrarianism is quite important if you don't have a. Um, improved economic system at the start of the game further on next tier if you want to colonize this is the most important tech in the game colonization allows you to colonize if you don't start with this and you need to colonize like japan or any of the nations who have lands nearby they want to colonize or you want to get on that rush in africa you need colonization if you want to know how to colonize go look at my colonialization guide i talk more about where to go now over here, this is one that's uh, less than useful just considering when it comes in. Currency standards per capita taxation is great. Um, most nations end up on this law and sit on it for most of the game. But the odds of you being able to shift to it by the time you research it, you're probably still crippled by your landholders um, interest groups. You won't be able to afford it. Other than that, doesn't do much. Stock exchange, if you're having trouble establishing trade routes because you have a bureaucracy shortage, it's great. Competitiveness is rather strange. It's not straightforward on how it actually works, but basically if they have to buy between different trade routes, they have a chance, a higher chance of buying from yours, basically. Um, banking is a great one. If you've got gold mines, these Techs right through here are probably going to be the most important techs in the game for you. South Africa is one that definitely needs this tech. 10% um, minting. Minting is money you get from making currency. If you've got gold mines, uh, this is a 10% increase to the output of your gold mine, basically. As well as if you're struggling with falling into debt, the loan interest rate decrease is massive as well. So that's it for that tier. The next tier, things get more interesting. These are pretty major texts you're going to get. Out of these, if you have bureaucracy problems, Central Archives is huge. It's another massive bureaucracy increase at the cost of paper, as well as a large employment of more clerks. It's going to cost you a lot of money to make the change, but if you're struggling with money, it can make a difference. The taxation capacity will allow you to tax um, it actually kind of tells you here, 25 will allow you to tax basically 250, mm, is that 250? I think 250 more, 250,000 more population in your state. The downside is, um, some provinces at Beijing start with millions. So it's hard to overcome it. I did, but everywhere else I'm suffering from tax. 
If you've got a large population, it is in fact a tax increase just researching the tech, um, which is nice, although imply applying the filing system can be more expensive. If you've got gold mines, central baking is great. Everyone else, it's a solid tech regardless. Postal savings, uh, this is kind of useless in the sense that your maximum cash reserves are probably already large. An increase to them is great, but it doesn't allow you to make more money. Modern sewage is another construction sector increase. If you're looking for throughput as well as a boost to infrastructure from population, can be nice if you're a country with a large population in one or two states. It's a very nice infrastructure boost before you get railroads because this is about the same time you would theoretically start building railroads. Outside of this, nationalism, if you're Germany or Italy or any nation that has specific events or journal entries associated with it, this and pan-nationalism are when those start applying more, meaning you might want to go for this over the others. Otherwise, it's relatively useless in the sense it gives you more authority and allows you to institute an ethnostate, which right now is useless, might be more useful later on as they make ethnostates more stable. But the reality is you probably have multiple cultures in your lands and you would like to be semi-tolerant of them. Egalitarianism, honestly, it's probably a bit of a problem in the sense that if your population is educated, literacy, they're going to demand a higher standard of living regardless of what their job. Um, so unless you're improving the standard of living, this can be a large increase to your radicals before you're ready for it. It does give you access to social security type stuff. Right now, social security is a trap. Try not to go into it unless you have to. Pharmaceuticals, it improves your health system. Health system's good if you've got a low population, you need to grow it. Otherwise, less useful, but it does unlock two laws. Psychiatry, if you're a large nation, Asia in particular, the 5% decrease in bureaucracy due to your population cost is huge. Um, can save you several thousand bureaucracy. The influence is nice as well. Dialectics, if you're investing in education, this is going to be a priority. Everyone else, it's an improvement to your innovation from your university at the cost of more papers. It's worth getting probably early on if you've got universities, might be the first one in this tech to get if you're prioritizing a tech build. If not, slightly less useful, but when you do get it, it does have some nice benefits. Realism, if you're doing arts academies, it's great. Otherwise, ignore it. The next level. If you're colonizing, this might be a beeline tech. Skipping some of these others. All it requires is pharmaceuticals and colonialism, meaning it's kind of a in a weird spot. It allows you to remove malaria from your colonies. Be aware that right now it's bugged, so you have to reload the game once you research the tech to get rid of the malaria, but it does get rid of it. It also allows opens up severe malaria states to colonizing, but you still have a tech penalty. It also allows you to improve your colony institution, which is great. It helps you colonize faster. Labor movement, less useful. Another increase in minimum expected standard of living can cause more, more radicals. The benefits it gives you are not really that great. This is a tech that I actually try to avoid for a while just because the standard of living increase, unless you're going to do welfare, which is kind of crippling, the benefits here aren't great. Child labor actually hurts you, getting rid of it hurts you more than it helps right now, which is strange. And regulatory bodies is cool if you can afford the institution. And if you're going for communism, you need this. Organized sports, probably one of the most useless techs in the game. 10% increase in prestige. Right now, prestige plays almost no impact in the game. Um, it's quite easy to become a great power as almost any nation. Um, it's nice, but it's not game-breaking. The next level here. Now, this depends on what you're doing. If you're going to um, unify Germany, you need pan-nationalism to get the southern Germans. It's really important. Elsewhere... Mutual funds might be one of the best techs in the game. More minting, lower interest rate, but it unlocks all the publicly traded stuff. If you're struggling with land holders and stuff, this is a way to start breaking them because it allows you to 
put your public ownership out there and give uh, money to your capitalists who are not part of your landholder groups. So this is a huge boost to your industrialists, your literati, and to some degree your armed forces. Can, will make the world of difference for your ability to reform laws. If you're struggling with reforming laws, this is a tech that you might want to research early on. Steel frame buildings, if you can afford to do this, is a huge boost to your construction sector's ability. You will almost double your construction capacity, basically. Be aware, though, it now starts requiring um, steel in particular. Right now, this is slightly inaccurate. Um, it's a huge increase to your production and stuff, but it can be very expensive unless you've got a local steel industry going already. But once you do, it's great tech, amazing tech if you can afford it. If you're having bureaucracy issues or taxation issues, this is just a flat increase for nations like China, Japan, and India. It gives you more money, basically um, several thousand more. Smaller nations, less important. Pan-nationalism, really authority, or unification, that's it. Civilizing is honestly almost forgettable. Even though it does increase your colonial affairs, it does nothing else other than unlock the ability to get Panama Canals. Anarchism, if you want to go for anarchy, go for it. Otherwise, ignore it and avoid it actively. Human rights, this is how you start to get to compulsory primary schools to overcome the child labor laws and how you unlock the highest level of education institutions. If you want to go pure education, this is the way to do it. You're not going to add 100 literacy without it, basically. Other than this, protected speech is nice if you want to spread more tech as well. This is a key um, technology build tech. Philosophical, again, Population cost multiplier decrease, great for large nations with tons of population. Socialism, getting closer and closer to communism here. You'll get uh, increased demand standard of living from literacy, which can be a problem. Workplace safety, if you're using this institution, it's great. If not, it's forgettable. And over here, cameras is an interesting one. I said how bad realism is. Cameras is slightly different because now it unlocks photographic art, which is when it unlocks services for this, um, for the Arts Academy. Services are always useful. So it will actually make your Arts Academy make money because right now selling fine goods is almost entirely pointless. Services, on the other hand, are quite valuable. Um, they're only produced domestically. They're only consumed domestically. So any increase to them is always a good thing. The next level, well, it's feminism. If you want to reform the women's laws, go for it. Otherwise, ignore it. Be aware, though, there can get movements pushing you to start um, giving the women the right to vote, and you will need this tech to solve all those potential problems. The next level here depends on what you're doing. If you're colonizing, malaria prevention is actually worth beelining uh, early on. Um, be aware the cost is is large. It's like six years of research easily um, to go from civilizing mission to malaria. But if you can, it's great because it gets rid of severe malaria. Again, you got to reload the save file to get rid of it right now. Hopefully that changes. But it will allow you to start colonizing Africa. It kicks off the scramble for Africa. If you get it first, you'll get Central Africa. If you don't get it first, someone else will probably get Central Africa. That's the reality. The technology spread won't get it to you fast enough. Political agitation. This is how you start to get like outlawed dissent, increasing your authority as well as um, suppressing people. It also uh, unlocks some other journal entries and stuff. So just be aware of where it is if you have the journal entries that concern it. Multilateral alliances. If you want to have more allies or start kick off World War I, you need this because it allows you to have more than one nation as an ally, as well as allow you to take more in diplomatic plays. Central planning. This is a very controversial tech in the sense that it is amazing because it gives you a huge increase to your bureaucracy and taxation. Um, it modifies it, and then if you swap to telephone switchboards, it does. The downside is it requires telephones, which is a huge technological investment. As China, it is very expensive to do. I had to build a whole industry literally just to get more bureaucracy. Honestly, 
you could honestly skip this and just build more government admin buildings. It's not as efficient, but it solves the need to build um, telephones, basically. International exchange standards, again, more minting and interest, always good with gold mines. Zeppelins, honestly, forgettable, don't bother with it. Gives you 10 prestige if you have a skyscraper. Boohoo. It, it's honestly totally forgettable. It has no other benefits, really. Elevators, more infrastructure and construction. At this point, you've probably got a maximum infrastructure or close to it because you should have electric railroads. Totally forgettable. On the other hand, arcades for your urban centers gives you more services at a small cost of glass and steel. This will make you tons of money if you can afford it. Paved roads, we'll just finish this off. More infrastructure and construction sector. It's forgettable. It's one of the last texts I felt the need to research. Modern financial instruments, more minting and interest. Always good, makes you money. There's no downside to researching it. Microeconomics. Allows you to trade more goods, makes your trade routes more competitive. Okay, at this point, you're hitting the end game. You should already be dominating, and it won't make much of a difference if you're not dominating. Mass surveillance, if you're struggling with um, radicals, this will solve it. You'll kill off the population. Your armed forces will get stronger. If you're going for like a dictatorship type rule, you'll need this. Otherwise, more money from taxation, always a decent thing. Antibiotics. More healthcare system. The, the bottom texts here are terrible in honesty. Behavioralism, decrease in pop cost for your bureaucracy. Analytical philosophy. If you want to get all the texts, you're going to want to take this first on this final level because it is a large increase to innovations. It's why I end up with this absolutely stupid amount of uh, excess innovation. Pretty much on its own. It's odd that it takes place at the end of the tech tree. A tech research increase. Mass propaganda, more authority, again, more demand of standard of living. And I forgot film. Once you hit film, you can actually make film art, which is a huge increase to services. It will make your arts academy pay off. And that is the military tree. I honestly recommend if you don't know what to research. If you, First off, if you're colonizing, quinine, civilizing, malaria is great. Be aware that getting malaria, you're going to have to wait a while to research everything else because the cost is massive. Mutual funds will break your landholders. This will increase your constructions, and this will increase your bureaucracy. Everything else, less than useful. OK, time for the final one. I did not expect this video to go this long. Let's talk about the military tree. So we've already talked about the need to get line infantry and artillery, because without it, irregular infantry sucks. So I'm going to assume you've already done some of that. We're going to go down the land, then we'll talk a little bit about the naval, which really sucks. So after you get line infantry artillery, you'll probably want to go research other stuff. If you don't, Army Reserves gives you conscriptable battalions. If you're relying on conscription to fight, first off, what are you really doing? Unless you're a small nation like Belgium where you need it, you're better off with a professional army usually. Um, but it does give a big bonus to mobilization. Napoleonic Warfare, this is a good increase for your mobile artillery. Um, basically, it makes your artillery significantly stronger. It's a great tech to get after you get line infantry and artillery because the jump from skirmish infantry is not as large as um, the boost here from mobile and everything else. Plus, it requires more resources. Further on here, logistics, more conscriptable battalions. It's pretty much it. If you need conscripts, it's great. Field works. This is a great tech. Everyone should get it if you can afford it. Army defense. It makes your defense that much stronger. Um, the reality is defense wins at this point up until you get towards like tanks and stuff. Once you hit skirmish infantry and trench infantry in particular, winning wars on offense is hard. This just makes it a lot harder for your enemies to retake land that you've taken. Shell guns. This is actually, honestly, a pretty bad way the tech is set up. The reality is every level that you improve your cannon production, you lose small arms. And right now, armies require significantly more small arms than they do artillery, meaning, yes, this gets you more artillery, but you don't need the artillery as much as you need the small arms. So the reality is 
you not don't necessarily ever really want to take the change in production methods or at least for a long time it's not a great time percussion caps this allows munition plants you're not going to be using munitions at this point but you're going to need the ammunition once you hit skirmish infantry because they start to require it whereas line infantry up here only require small arms Basically, get percussion caps before you get general staff, unless you're going to buy munitions from abroad. Once you do, skirmish infantry is a huge increase to your military strength and is the last one you'll see for probably about 20 to 30 years in game, meaning it's a pretty key tech. Uh, once you get it, put on your skirmish infantry. Just be aware that it does require munitions, so you kind of need to build a munitions industry in order to support these guys. You won't really be able to buy them enough from abroad. Triage, if you've got opium, it's great because it allows you to um, get your army to recover more. Otherwise, is entirely useless unless you've got a supply of opium, which most nations don't, making this and modern nursing pretty entirely useless right now. There's no substitutes for opium in the game currently, which I disagree with heavily, heavily. Over here, rifling, this will actually increase the small arms production. Once you take this rifling technique, uh, production method, you could theoretically do smooth bores. The downside is you'll be losing a good portion of the increase of 35. You'll only be increasing it by 20, but it's nice. And you'll be using hardwood and stuff. It's a good increase if you're struggling with a small arm shortage. But you probably won't be unless you're constantly fighting or building a huge army. Electric telegraph is a very important uh, tech. It reduces war exhaustion from casualties, allowing you to outlast other people in wars. Um, right now, war exhaustion from casualties isn't huge, but I suspect we'll get stronger as the game goes on and in more DLCs and stuff. Enlistment, more conscription. This allows mass conscription law in the army model is pretty huge. Um, this gets you, gets you closer to modern warfare, World War I stuff. It allows you to build your barracks, your conscription, recruit and train way more troops. Most nations don't need this. If you're large enough, you're good. But unless everyone else adopts this law, you can just ignore it. But if they do, you better keep up because they will have way more troops than you. Breach loading. Now this is a increase in artillery again, as well as a unlocking more artillery using more ammunition and artilleries as well but it's a nice boost to your damage of your army and it's one of the last big bonuses you'll get for a while repeaters more small arms i'd pick this over breach loading electric i'd pick this repeaters first in this tech then probably breach loading unless someone else is going to do mass conscription military st st statistics uh, this is good if you start mobilizing your population, but otherwise, they um, if you're relying on conscripts, you need this. If not, you're using a professional army, way less important. But considering you need it to unlock everything else below it, you're going to research it whenever you get it. But it's definitely one technology spread could take, and it wouldn't hurt anything. Hand crank machine guns. Increase the defense, increase the kill rate, all good things for your military. War propaganda, guess what? More conscriptable battalions. Honestly, just don't even bother with it. Get it through technology spread. Bolt action rifle, more small arms. However, this is where you start requiring oil. If you don't have oil, well, hmm, you might want to think about getting a source at this point. Otherwise, you're going to be significantly behind. Since how it's hard to get oil right now, um yeah you might never actually implement bolt action rifles further on here war gaming siege artillery is a huge offensive increase however it's balanced out by the increase to trench infantry so trench infantry this is the point of the game defense is stronger than offense it's been getting that way for a while once you get trench infantry Winning a war against somebody who has trench infantry is almost impossible. Um, they're just so tanky. They don't lose much land. They don't retake a lot of land. This is trench warfare, World War I. Nothing really shifts. Um, the front lines tend to stagnate. Wars go on pretty much forever. It's a pain. 
it's really quite a pain this tech um but it makes sense early on offense defense equal this makes defense superior until offense wins later on war gaming siege yes this is great it does not overcome the increase in defense that trench work gives you further on down here defense in depth if you were worried about defense not being super strong well this makes it even stronger and the reality is it was already strong once you get this it's almost impossible to take your lines for quite some time an automatic machine gun if you can afford it is great thankfully it does not require oil making this a very key tech here if you're going on offense you need it if you're doing defense defense in depth now all of these are just specialists chemicals is more offense flamethrowers more kill rates this requires oil this requires oil as well the reality is though be aware it causes immense devastation and you capture a small amount of provinces i don't really like using it but if you want to kill off the other side's army great to use this is gas warfare though one of the darker things and still forbidden by international law after world war one for a very good reason killed both sides indiscriminately absolutely terrifying Stormtroopers over here. This gets you infiltrators. This is a very nice boost to your offense. Be aware it does require radios. I said radios were a key military tech. This is why this overcomes the lack of provinces being easily captured from trench infantry. NCO training. This unlocks squad infantry, which is basically a better version of trench infantry, but you take more provinces. Combined with stormtroopers, you'll be taking a lot more land. Military aviation, this unlocks war machines, gives you airplanes, unlocks aerial reconnaissance, which is a huge increase to your ability to capture provinces. Be aware it doesn't entirely scale here for the conscription centers. It's kind of odd. For the barracks, it gives a nice boost to offense, defense, huge boost to provinces captured. For the conscription, it's a huge boost to offense, but less provinces captured. I don't know if that's a bug. I've not looked into it in depth, but it does require oil and aeroplanes, and the airplanes require a lot of oil. Again, you're only going to be building this if you have a great source of oil. That's kind of the reality of late game techs. Oil runs the world and it's done for close to 100 years now. You need oil. Concrete bunkers, between defense and depth and concrete bunkers, it's almost impossible to win a war against somebody who has these techs on defense i've tried it it's a pain however once you get to mobile armor guess what tanks now tanks is a huge increase in your offense this is the point where defense falls off if you get tanks you can actually start to push grounds combining it with chemical warfare over here your offense of your army eclipses the defense making it very hard to stop a tanked army however be aware the cost of engines and oil is huge anyway that's the land stuff the navy stuff honestly don't research naval tech unless you're someone like great britain or you're fighting somebody researching naval tech it's basically entirely pointless um, right now i've played probably close to 30 full games now I had two naval battles. I conquered all of Asia as China. I conquered all of India as India and then most of the Southeast Asia. I conquered most of Europe as France. I never had naval battles, really. The navies miss. Um, it's just a problem with naval warfare and games. No one's figured out how to do it well. Um, if, you're fight if you're invading Great Britain or you're worried about your supply lines being raided, yeah, focus on the, the increased military monitors, destroyers. Otherwise, ignore it. The port level, these give you increased port level. It's kind of nice. If you're running short on convoys and you need more, do this, but there's better ways to get the increased production. Power of the purse increases just the production methods, as well as increasing your offense and defense. I wish I could give you guys more on this, but most of this tech is entirely useless unless someone else is fighting you with the same stuff. The one exception is the landing crafts. It allows you to ignore the difficult landing penalty. If you're struggling with naval invasions, you need this tech. The reality is though, you would have to focus this. You're better off getting it through tech spread and then focusing landing craft. 
But once you do, if you're Japan invading China, France, or Great Britain invading each other, D-Day, you can kind of recreate it here, although long before um, World War II. It's great. Makes a huge difference. Submarines. Your offense is great, but your defense is terrible. If you're raiding people, is great. If you want to cripple Great Britain in a land war by using submarines, it works. Just raid and pillage their supply lines. Their troops will starve, but otherwise less useful. I really would tell you more about this stuff, but it's pretty bad. Aircraft carriers, on the other hand, is a very large increase to your offense and defense, but battleships are still better at this point. The only unique thing is battleships give you more maximum declared interests. So if you want to project, project your power around the world more, is great. Otherwise, less than useful. Dreadnought monitors give it as well, but the big increase of the battleships is there. This is the last text I researched. It's entirely pointless, basically. So that is the military tree. Hopefully this has helped you guys understand it. Early on, offense, defense equal. Defense becomes superior. Offense becomes superior. Think of it that way. If you're having trouble conquering people, you want to invest in this tree. If you're having trouble defending, you only need to spend a little bit of time getting the defensive text to hold out. And anyway, that is it for this video. By all means, leave a comment, tell me what I did wrong in your potential build, or say I did something right. Anyway, please do leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done so, check out my Discord, all that great stuff. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a long video. If you watched all the way through, good for you. Otherwise, bye for now.